Yes, go for it, man. Yeah, about uh, th those papers. We went through it on the show here before. And from what I've gathered personally from studying in it, I still have it on my computer, uh, is that it's just basically flat. They don't actually say there's any limits to travel capabilities or distance. They don't refer. It's just the flatness, the geometrical orientation, as it were, right? There's no indication that there is a dome or anything, really. Any kind of hint. No, I, I, you're, you're correct in that they don't, they don't talk right. about the dome at all. They, they just, just talk about the level of the flatness. surface. Correct. Yeah, but just want to emphasize that. Well, I, I completely agree with you. They're doing nothing but assuming that the surface under the wheels of the plane are flat. It doesn't draw in anything else into the equation. I get what you're saying. Exactly. So that, that, that's pretty straightforward, pretty clear, and pretty practical. But yeah, it leaves out still like they don't... I guess you'd have to deal with like hypersonics or whatever with when they do absurd fast tests and whatever. But that, those are probably all classified, like gets into UFO type uh, travel territory, whatever. But oh. yeah, then definitely any confine would become very relevant at absurd speeds. No, but, exactly. And, and furthermore, let's just say you have a plane above the ground at, say, 50 feet, right? If that plane's flying at Mach 1, let's say, isn't it eventually going to run into the ground? Which is, why they, which is why their mathematics tell you that it's a flat plane. But you, you can't have it both ways is what I'm trying to get at. You can't tell me on one hand that NASA has to assume that everything's flat and then tell me that we live on a round sphere. It just, it, it's completely mind-blowing to me that they'll make both assertions. Exactly. It's double thinking plain sight. <laughs> oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and there's also a PayPal link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcomed back on the next stream. Please also share the show. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please, please share the show. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. Now we are joined by Jose, P. Mars, Ranty Flat Earth, Sleeping Warrior, Travis, uh, I think it's Flat Earth Vegan Goy, Earth Flattener, Arwin, and Alan. Good to have you all. Yo, yo. Flat Earth. Good yeah. afternoon. Sir, sir. Cheerio. Jose was taking the piss out of you behind your back while you were talking. Then you should have seen him. He was impersonating you, sir. Sir. I could, I could see. I could <laughs> he see. did it very well. Very <laughs> exactly. Jose doesn't know. I can see his camera as well. I'm doing the intro out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> yes, I saw. It was good. Yeah, it made me think, like, you know what? Maybe there's, like, this market out there for Flat Earth that nobody's even thought about. Because what about the death? Maybe we should, because we're talking about all this stuff, would be really funny or, well, handy if we could have like a deaf translator in the corner. Well, it's kind of, I was watching. It would be like, very BBC ish. I was watching um, a real underspitting image recently because they are good, even though they're old now and you forget some of the characters and why they were in spitting image anyway. And for anyone that's not in the UK, spitting image is like a, a, like a rubberized version of a human. And it was all puppets and it was satirical by nature. So basically, you'd have Margaret Thatcher and you'd have John Major all in puppet form made of rubber. And, and Ronald Reagan. Oh, man, it was so funny at the time. And, and it's funny looking back on it now, even though you, 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 forget, you forget the main politics that were being played at the time. 
But I can just imagine the whole concept of flat Earth, right? You could have you could have spitting image book <laughs> set up. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a really good oh, idea. Man. I'd love to see a celebrity death match version of flat Earth going up against <laughs> yeah. NASA. It'd be great. You could have soundly on one side being represented by I don't know something, and then like us on the other side, and you could make up any argument you wanted. It'd be great. You should get some blind flat earthers because then you wouldn't have to create up all these ad hoc hypotheses to explain all the pictures. Speaking, of the speaking of proving Ooh. something to a blind person, my friend, would you care to explain to me how you personally would go about explaining to a blind person that the Earth is a globe? Well, he me? sees it as himself. <laughs> That's a good one. He's I would say himself. people sail around the globe based on math that the earth is a globe and they arrive based on math so they you just have to take your word for it right no nobody uses maths to sail around the world p they all use bearings so that's nonsense like planes, well, planes. I, got, and, I got i got and, that from george orwell so and, i guess george orwell you know more than george orwell don't you riley yeah, bearings okay just just, just for a caveat sorry if you're in the southern george, hemisphere, george orwell your calculations george orwell's not a historian why are you referencing George Orwell? <laughs> because well, I got, what is he a historian I now? Uh, what, what about, about what, why would we take the word of George Orwell? Orwell? He's not a historian now, is he? No, he's a very educated person. Right, also a novelist. <laughs> yeah. So that makes that what credible? Okay, right. So Jurassic Park. So that's that's proof of dinosaurs. Is it Jurassic Park? Michael Crichton, uh, he went and gave lectures trying to condemn climate change and global warming. And yeah, he's also, he, um, I think he nearly graduated Harvard Medical School. And he's, a, I would consider him like knowledgeable in science. So what? So, what? so if so I say, Steve, if I give the same mean... example and use Steven Spielberg and say that Steven Spielberg is really well educated, <laughs> does that make his fiction true? Or Stanley Kubrick. Well, this is a straw man argument. Okay. I was using George Orwell. I, I like George Orwell. Uh, I think he's intelligent. And I like his articles and I like his books. So, I yeah, I use them as references. I don't see an issue with that. I think he's more credible than, say, Riley. Oh, it's very dangerous, though. Riley. Very dangerous to open the floodgates because we'll have people coming in but saying, I'm a, a big, era, I'm a big, massive Mel Brooks fan. Therefore, space balls prove space. Ludicrous I mean, go. There's right. just as much evidence in space balls as NASA gives us, so... Aldous Huxley was a novelist, too. I think uh, he he said a lot of intelligent things, too. I think he was pretty smart. Uh, I like his speech, The Ultimate Revolution, he gave at Berkeley. Yeah. He does a great speech. Shout out to 787GENX for the super chat. 50 for 550. Thanks for the show, Nathan, and shout outs to all. Indeed. Thank you very much for the super chat. $50. Wow. Thank you. Canadian dollars, I think. Quick, quick shout out to Alpha do Alpha da Terra Plana from Brazil. He say no curvature air is flat. Thank you for watching. I'm pretty sure that guy's called Michael, so thank you very much, Michael. Oh, and by the way, I've heard that cannabis is now completely and totally legalized in Canada. As of two days pretty ago. Impressive. Yeah, pretty As impressive. It, except that if you, if you attempt to enter the so-called United States and admit that you've ever smoked cannabis, you can be banned from the United States, even if right. you're driving in over into Washington where it's fully legal. That's a great country. So if they ever Lovely. ask you, just say, no, I never inhaled. And you should be covered. Absolutely. Just say, just, I was, I was with my Bill friend Clinton. Bill Clinton one time, and, and uh, we didn't inhale. We just, uh, it was just there. Would the same excuse have worked for Monica Lewinsky? <laughs> That's right. Probably wouldn't have mattered. I'm right, surprised that she didn't get Hillary. Or instead, everybody should just stop smoking pot and tell everybody else to stop because it's making people dumb, and that's the point of legalizing it. I think no, so. I, I don't. I'm a former pot smoker. I don't smoke it anymore, but I, I would certainly never Good. tell Excellent. anyone that they can't do it. I, I support it. Let them, let them smoke what they want. Yeah, I agree. It's not true. 
It's absolutely. I agree with it Earth. My body, quality my choice. And on your, look, if your diet is really you shitty and, and cheap, right. and you smoke pot, yeah, you're gonna screw yourself over. But if you eat healthy, organic, preferably, well, then it will that, have. That sounds like some trash do that are good. Trash now. Well, I'll just say from my personal experience, I'm a I'm a vegan. I'm fairly I'm very healthy. I walk a lot. But what I found is I don't have uh, dreams that I remember when I smoke weed. Uh, but I have massively cool dreams when I don't smoke it. But that's just me. And I would certainly never use uh, violence uh, by a, a violence based on men's opinions to keep others from doing what they want to do. Yeah, I think all drugs should be legal, but they should uh, have social disapproval, like with cigarettes, where like if you're a drug addict, you should be called a junkie and kind of looked down upon by that society. Jesus. Are you going for a new Reich, PMRs? That's really sick, man. I was on board with everything you said right up until you said you need to start pointing people out and ridiculing them. Yeah, I think we need to bring shame back. We have this idea in our society yeah. where it's bad to shame people, and that's why everyone's Oh, really? Well, it's happening ignorant. all the time. So, so I shame people for not reading books. Should we shame people for hanging out on a flat earth forum, being a global, and uh, uh, doing, we, their, doing their job as an agent? We should shame the flat earthers for believing ridiculous conspiracies that are total fantasy. Why would someone spend so much time on a flat earth channel if they don't believe in it? Why, why do I have to justify why I, what do I do with my time? Oh, I know why you're here. Yeah, you do. You're a genius. You're trying to get people thrown in jail, and then you want to blame the Freemasons. Uh, you're doing a pretty good job uh, on your own there. <laughs> Let's make up a quick narrative. I think Pete's actually in jail. P, sorry, not Pete. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually in jail. And he's getting paid five cents an hour to troll the hell out of us. That's that's what's happening. And they and they, they put that bicycle in there just as a prop. It would make sense. And Did it looks like he's in the looks like he's in the northeast somewhere with that uh, nasty looking heater he's got there. Did you see that super chat, Maeve? I did. I did. Hey, hey all right, Jose. Phone drop. Excuse me. I keep dropping for some reason. It's not just you, man. Yeah, but you really got to check your thoughts, man, when you throw them out there, because that's really, it's not very constructive. I'll, I'll tell you about it. Like every time people think, oh, right, we're, we're going to just have to crack it down like that. It's always going to turn to shit, going to make things worse. It does it every time. It just creates more unrest and mistrust and hatred when you do that. See, yeah. the, the way Portugal did it, is a pretty good model in my opinion um the way that they've done it is it, it's it's still socially looked down upon but like i can go into a dispensary or a pharmacy and get a gram of heroin if i have a prescription for it and it's as easy as me going to the doctor and telling them i want a prescription for heroin right and their their drug dependency and drug deaths have gone down astronomically i can't pull up the stats right now but i'll go grab them if you want them well, you, you know that back in 1900, uh, Coca-Cola was made with cocaine. Uh, you could get cough medicine made by Bayer, Bayer that uh, had cannabis and heroin in it. And uh, let it let it go. I mean, if someone wants to OD on heroin, great. You know, let them, ah, let them do those it. those were the days. Now, come on. Those were the oh, days. Why? Who is it me to, to, to tell them what they can and can't do with their own body? I agree. Well, I I completely agree. Like if you don't want to if you want to do that to yourself, yeah, there's no reason in me spending resources and stopping you if that's going to be the outcome no matter what, right? Yeah, you're going to save us all some time too. I mean, it's, it's the only reason that we have so much crime with these meth heads and these people out here is cuz they got to commit crime so they can buy their crap. Yeah, that is true. I'm Same definitely way. for legalization, but yeah, to let them kill themselves, that's I don't know, that's not good. It's better no, I to think help it them deal back. with it. It's better to just help them deal with it, it was surely the and, right and see if they, if they still have some kind of constructive, constructive thing to add to the world. You know, no, I think the only reason. Yeah. They, a lot of these junkies, when they get their life back together, they become really amazing artists, for example. 
So that's fine. And a lot of them don't, though. And I don't see the problem yeah, with okay, them Okay, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't give them any chance, that you should just right. throw them aside. You can't help somebody that doesn't want to help themselves out when it's that the is same true. thing. You're it's correct. the same thing You're as correct. trying to convince somebody that, that we live on a flat earth. It's the same exact principle, which is why this topic fits this debate, in my opinion. Right? I you agree. Can I agree. But if nobody actually gives them some kind of attention and just think, yeah, just looks with disgust at them and everything yeah then they're not gonna have a lot of hope and yeah people need people so the mindset is important in dealing with this you know? I personally uh, personally don't believe in death anyway so I mean I believe you're gonna pass to another dimension or what's going whatever but this this idea that the government tells people they can't kill themselves well what the hell is the reason for that it doesn't make sense to me uh, because a lot of people, when they actually do it, don't really want to do it. They're just in a frenzy, in kind of crazy mindset. That's a problem. So, so what? They'll find out later. I'd, I'd put in suicide yeah, parlors yeah, but and offer a money not, back it's guarantee. It's not about those people. It's about everyone else they leave behind. It causes <clears throat> all, suffering. All the people that jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge regretted it like the second they left, jumped. And uh, the ones that survived, at least, that's what they all say. How do you know that they all regretted it? That's what they say, the survivors say. They so, say, that's what the media yes. says. And yes, but they, they, they only came to that conclusion after, after experiencing that horrific fall and dealing with the aftermath. Do you really think that they would have even had that thought if they succeeded? No, that thought would have never Why crossed their mind. Why are you arguing with me about this? <laughs> what the hell? Because it's, because it's a formological fallacy. No, <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> he starts getting all all hyper and, oh and, and emotional when he loses. But they're actually putting suicide <laughs> nets in the Golden Gate Bridge now, Who just like the suicide nets really? in the Apple factories now. Oh, over in, oh yeah, I know China. about that one. Yeah, so they're, they're, they're stopping traffic. I live close to the San Francisco, so they're putting these nets in here now over on the bridge, stopping traffic so they can catch all these people, so they can... Who knows what they're going to do because Reagan closed all the mental hospitals in the 1980s. So I don't even know what you do with all these homeless people and all this other stuff. You know, hmm. it's a, it's a mess. Right. But hey, Arwen, you're saying that um, you smoke pot and you eat healthy and it makes mm -hmm. you more intelligent. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> okay, right, right. And and that's fine for you. I accept it for you because you are smart, right? right. But um, there are other people who are have very addictive personalities. So if you were to tell them to live how you live, they'll just keep going and they'll get addicted and become these people that you're talking about that we need to help. And that's why I agree with P. Mars when he says it should be looked down upon. It should be, it shouldn't be promoted like you're saying. And I, do you no, think? No, I don't know. That, no, that's about what they do with it. You well, know, yeah. If you're so gonna, if you're just gonna not do anything, look does at it Hulk matter Hulk. if you're gonna go end up being an alcoholic or be uh, yeah. a sex junkie or a party junkie or smoking pot? It's about what you want to do and how much you're gonna be willing to work on yourself. And if you are willing to work on yourself, then pot can actually help you to confront inner hidden issues that you have because it enhances for me at least and for many other people that i know it mostly enhances things it the, confronts you with things you keep buried in yourself it's very most, confronting and that but helps do you, you do you think canada is making marijuana legal because they're expecting everybody to eat organically and become more intelligent or do you think it's a breakdown of society and to make us dumber it could be either can I make a point it's about It's probably going to be both because yeah. okay. it all yeah. depends on how much GMO is going to be uh, out there at the same time because that's very counterproductive. If you look at like Hollywood and the music entertainment industry, they just they put like these people that do drugs on a, a pedestal, you know, like they'll interview the rap artist who's like stoned out of his mind and it's hmm. they're doing they're making it cool to be a junkie pretty much. Um so like the entertainment isn't promoting this stuff because they they care about you. It's about brainwashing and mind control. Like Huxley. It's not even about Russell the drugs. About it's that. about being stupid with it. That's what they're showing you. I every time I talk with people and smoke with them together, I have amazing 
conversations or like really heartfelt carefully phrased conversations about deep subjects and yeah when i was younger then i would uh, often like drift off and just become nonsensical or whatever or just go wherever now i'm much more serious and uh, that doesn't happen it still is nonsensical though now only to you because you're an idiot <laughs> Shout out to Gramercy. anyway uh, yeah I, I disagree it all depends on how you conduct yourself and yeah if you are going to be an idiot yeah it's probably going to make it worse but if you're actually a constructive person and you're careful with dealing with it you learn how to yeah how to live with it carefully and not overdo it not try to escape into it from problems then it can be very useful just well, but some people to do with some it. people like tom petty right he was probably a big pot smoker and clearly a smart guy very successful and then he got into you know narcotics whatever he did and he died from it he overdosed yeah. from it you know right so it can happen to the best of us yeah but that didn't and happen that's... from cannabis i'll guarantee you that oh, oh, no. I, that. I, I yeah. agree it didn't i agree it didn't but ultimately I... yeah I smoked yeah, the stuff for get, decades, almost morning, it. noon, and yeah. night. So, and I never, never went up to the to the other stuff. But uh, I, for me, it was when I got the dreams back. I mean, that for me, that basically beat any kind of uh, any kind of enlightenment I was getting smoking a joint. That's, but that's just me. Well, I, I learned a lot from smoking pot. So, I, I was very introvert. I used to be very introvert, not very communicative, very shy. Now, how yeah. is this related to Flat Earth, guys? No, not really. It's related to Canada. I would right. say it's related in the sense that other people that are here and they've gone into the rabbit hole, they will understand this conversation, even if they don't understand that we've gotten to Flat Earth. Right. So hopefully this will make people realize that we are normal, we are like them. And we're just in a different part of the rabbit hole. <clears throat> and if people would get curious to cannabis, I definitely recommend that you do it like after your teens. That's the best, in my opinion. Some people think differently. But if you do it, then approach it like a ritual or whatever. Like be very sparingly with it. Choose a moment like in the week or maybe in a month or however you're, you're going to take it and just do it once uh, and maybe meditate or whatever and then it's going to be very healthy and you're going to be using the uh, the can cannabinoids the cannabinoids right yeah Difficult i'm going to read out awake souls comment normally most of what awake souls isn't worth much but in this instance i think his comments worth reading anything used as escapism will lead to degenerative spiral improving yourself as a person requires work and sacrifice weed can be used for opening consciousness or to escape reality never a true word spoken awake souls very well put very true indeed and you are a different example um arwin because you've said before that your school or something they made you guys take acid or hallucinogens no no or something not school like that. oh no 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 well whatever whatever what was it no, that wasn't basically... Who did it? That... It was the S&M club that he attends. They just do that sort of thing every now and again. But um, Arwen doesn't like to talk about it. I'm not going to say his name. Absolutely well, but not. okay, so it was a person. It wasn't like an establishment or something. No, 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 no. Oh, no, okay. It, All right. It was, it All was right. illegal. So he was even addressed by one of the school uh, principals, I think. So but, I did have yeah, something he to just do with showed school. a freaking okay. badge and whatever. And it was crazy. My point 15, is, so. my point is that you are resilient to addiction. If you went through that and you're still the person that you are today, then you are resilient. So you teaching other people to take drugs for enhancement might not be the best idea because you're a bad example. What? Of the no, I of never it. recommend people to go through that. I never did that. I'm just talking about cannabis. That's totally different. Well, yeah, I recommend cannabis. mushrooms. It's the same. It's all the same. I don't recommend mushrooms. I'd say be I very. You can't compare cannabis to heroin. You, you can't compare it. It's mind altering. 
mushrooms are awesome. Mind-altering drugs. Gotta... Mind-altering drugs. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but the mind yeah, alteration hold on, hold on. is not on, as hold on. impactful hold on. as with mushrooms. Hold on, hold on, Arwin. The... Hold on. This has gone from yeah. discussing the very current affairs of Canada making cannabis decriminalized or legalized, whichever it may be, to I like shrooms and I like acid. And I, this conversation has degenerated far too far now. So can we bring it back onto flat earth at least vaguely? The earth is flat. It is, flat. obviously and observably. Like make... How about uh, <laughs> housekeeping? Well, no way. Yeah. We're like 20 minutes into this show now, so 25 I'd minutes. like to make one more point about the, the drugs thing, is that one of the first conspiracies I got into was how like the CIA was pushing LSD on people and stuff So in the 60s. So mm -hmm. I don't know. When I see someone in the alternative media promoting drug use, I kind of think they're CIA. <laughs> That's just me. Fair yeah, enough. or corporations that are leaning on a prospect of legalization, which is sensible, and they're just abusing it, basically, the freedom that they think is going to come. That's what corporations do. They always freaking yeah, you can exploit everything. Yeah. Okie dokie. So about that uh, punch a train causeway. Yeah, come on, Still Pete, flat as ever. Show us the curve, P. Where's the curve that you think is there? There's lots of pictures of the curve, but you're just going to say that they're going to deny them. Yeah, where is it in that picture, though? Specifically that one. Mm. Why does it not support soundly at all? I'm pretty sure it does, but, you know, whatever. Okay, do you want to explain how? I'd rather hear you explain how you've debunked soundly again. Uh, there's no curve, P. I think you just I think you just show a picture and then you assert something and you don't you don't really back it up, you know. Well it's on screen, you had it on screen for like twenty minutes and we didn't get any anywhere with it with you. Where's yeah. the curve, P? I th I think it's there. I believe it's there. Really? Why doesn't anybody else agree with you then? Well, I think some people agree well probably more people agree with me than with you, but maybe So you basically, what you're saying is that that straight white line in the picture is actually curved. Yeah. Okay. Anybody agree with you on that, P? What was that? You've all seen the Soundly debunk, right? The, the video he did on Punch Train, right? There's loads of Soundly debunk videos. Right. The Perth uh, Perth one, he did a really good one with the... the, with the uh, Four different, uh, the four different shots at the same time. I'll put it in the chat. You all seen it though. So about that curvature, P. Yeah, what about it? Where is it? Right there. Really? Anybody agree with you on that? Probably. Anybody agree with um, P Miles on the panel? I don't think anybody agrees with P Miles, and I don't, I don't think he any agrees with himself. No. I think even he thinks that he knows that it's wrong. I liked it when that guy, uh, Flat Earth, I'm sorry, I can't see the rest of your name, said literally in a dead, quiet, calm voice, he knows why you're here. I'd agree with that sentiment, because I think I know why you're here as well, P. Flat Earth Vegan Goy. Is that who said it? Flat Earth Vegan Voy? Yeah, it was me. I agree with you. I think I know why he's here as well. I mean, who spends every morning basically in a place where they completely disagree with everyone? Doesn't make any sense. I agree. I always look for motive. So, why are you here, P? I don't think I have to justify why I'm here. No, you're right, you don't. But I think that if you've got sincerity in you, I think that it would be expected to explain why you would spend time in this church when you're the opposing religion, right? Um, I'm passionate about the truth. How do, you know how do you know what the truth is? Well, you know, my truth is that the Earth is a globe, right? Your truth? How do you know? 
Is how do this I your know? Perception, or is it what you've been told, or is it what you've? I, how do I justify my belief in the globe? Like yeah. all the photographic evidence, the satellites existing, <laughs> the the way the moon and the sun Based on it. move in the sky, all the stars. <clears throat> so why doesn't Flat Earth Perth's picture show the same thing that you believe? Um, I mean, I'm not an expert on like, it? has he faked it or is it, is it not curved after all? I'm a, I'm a professional poker player. I'm not a professional globe prover. Right. I don't, I don't get paid like you. You can tell but... what's a straight line though, can't you? When there's a, a straight white line put on the picture and it, and the thing behind it matches it. <sighs> I don't know. I'd have to look at it closer. Nathan, that's okay. We've got all day. Nathan, do you want to put it back up again for P? Which one do you want? I we could do this one um... all day. We got the Phuket word comparison with the bendy bridge at the moment. Do you want the yeah, other one? Yeah. The one with it nice and flat think, from in the air. In the picture you showed me, there the bridge started to bend towards the horizon. Yeah. Why is it yeah. that? There it is. Happy yeah, days. Ben, it bends at the horizon. There's no, there's no bending going on. It's uh, all down to the angle of attack. Tumbleweed. Well, I mean, I disagree. I mean, I don't know what you want me to say. Well, <clears throat> you have to say anything. It's on screen. That's why there was a protracted silence, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I don't want to obfuscate the point, but in a slightly different subject, when you when some, when taking long distance observations, I mean, I come across some crazy stuff because I catch buildings. They're not that far away. But then I caught like a big tower and a big building, one right next to another. And I was looking for it in the maps and I couldn't figure it out. It was closer than I thought. So I got the tower right in the Google Maps. And I was looking for that building next to it. And I couldn't find it. And I keep going away, away. It was like three miles further away. But in the actual video, they look like right next to each other. Yeah. It's a little mind blowing the way you, you see things in the distance pretty cool. <clears throat> it's, a, it's, a, it's a big task to find stuff that you catch in the distance in a new place because I'll be freaking just digging into the maps and looking at every single corner and intersection and I cannot find the things until, hallelujah, I find the goodies, you know. I'd like to address the uh, the wind turbines, if you can, Nath. Yeah. Did you want to? Do you want me to present you? Yes, please. Because I know this has been um, a bone of contention for a lot of people recently. In fact, over the last few months, it's the one thing that the globe has hang on to with my footage. Is saying that the wind turbines seem to be appearing to go over the curve. Well, I'm just going to do a little presentation now that kind of uh, blows that out of the water, so to speak. You're on. So, Go ahead. So obviously you've seen the the Stena line compressions with the boats. Uh, if anybody hasn't um, been tuning into this this uh, line of research, essentially the top part of the boat is out of the very narrow viewing angle, which Nathan has been talking about recently. Um, you can see that there's no compression of that on either image, uh, but the wording Stena line on this boat at the top, which was from a low elevation, and the Stena line here, there's clearly a difference, a disparity of about 50%. Uh, the, higher, uh, the higher elevation, which is the bottom image, uh, is about 50% larger on the, on the hull, uh, including the orange part at the bottom where you can clearly see that the whole of the boat is still being captured from this one foot elevation. So we've got compression going on at the bottom and outside of the very new uh, narrow viewing angle, we don't have any at all. Um, here, obviously, I've just put some lines in comparing the two. This part here is a, a, a taken out from this top image, uh, lined up, and you can see that there is no um, difference between the, the top parts of the boat. Um, let me just move through and show you. Here's the bottom part of the boat, which doesn't match up. 
Now you can see where the compression is taking place on the bottom part of it. So if we apply this logic to the wind turbine, so here we have a, a typical wind turbine, um, looking at it from say elevation, uh, when we apply some compression to the bottom part of it here, so this has been reduced by 50%, so we've got 50% compression of the stem uh, and not of the actual hub itself or the blades. So when we apply 50% compression to it, this is the type of image that you would get. So this is applying the same logic as with the as with the boat. Um, if we go a little bit further and we compress it to 80%, uh, obviously at a very narrow viewing angle, much further distance, you're talking of around about 18 to 20 miles away as opposed to six and a half to seven miles with the boats. So that compression will be much more. We now have 80% compression of the actual stem outside of the very narrow viewing angle, the hub. Uh, and this is the image that you will get. And that looks very similar to the footage that I show all the time. It's simply the compression of the very narrow viewing angle of the stem and the hub itself that is outside of the very narrow viewing angle retains its full um, angular size. Very good. Nice. Good demonstration, Ranty, as always. <clears throat> Ranty, what's the, what's the uh, distance involved? Yo! Hey, Hello. Tim. Hello. <laughs> what's the distance involved to what, Anthony? To the boats? Yeah. To the boats was six and a half to seven miles. Oh. Uh, but the distance to the turbines is, well, from what I'm viewing, is anywhere from 14 miles up to a distance of 24 and a half miles, I believe, is the furthest ones we can see. So applying that logic of compression of the very narrow viewing angle, um, say this is the furthest turbine that I would be looking at, so that's going to obviously receive the most compression of the stem. Uh, this is what this is the result that you would see. So as the blade turns around, it is outside the viewing angle, um, and it's it's it looks normal, but it looks like it's cresting the waves because it's all being compressed at the bottom. I want to say a bit shout out to George Stevens for the super chat. He says, nice to have Ranty back. It certainly is. Ranty, how yep. many how many different examples do you have of the Stena liner and your whole uh, viewing angle theory? Dozens. Dozens? Dozens. If not, probably hundreds. So you, you do a lot of photography from one foot, at like 18 miles and stuff like that. I do it from so a lot of different How come it doesn't elevations. always do that? How come it all it doesn't always do that with your buildings? I think, and it, with, I uh, think it has something to do with the how how much wind there is or how much um, of a swell there is. Because when it's really really calm versus when it's really windy, you get a different type type of um, effect. You get the inferior mirage as opposed to the compression. Uh, so it's I not the viewing that, angle that's doing it. It's actually the atmospheric conditions. No, no, it's the viewing angle. But if, it, if the atmospheric conditions change and your very, angle then changes, that doesn't no, no, make sense. No, no, no. On a very, very still day, you tend to get the you tend to get the compression. So you see the compression when the when the atmosphere changes and it's a bit more windy or a bit more choppy. That it no longer shows compression. It seems to change it into an inferior mirage. This is what I, am I just seeing. I, you just basically outlined exactly what I just told you. So it's not the viewing angle. Yes, right. Is. So you're claiming Sorry, that the now, atmospheric in. effects have no hold influence. Hold on, now, in. let me just let me just cover this. Do you want to click on my icon, Tim? Uh, I would love nothing else, Nate. How <laughs> you Excellent. doing, buddy? <laughs> That's beautiful, silky smooth. So, do you mm. see these turbines? It's the curve of the Earth. Right. So I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> I see these turbines as they get further into the distance. They appear to get smaller. Now that is a reduction in the viewing angle due to perspective. The further away they are, the smaller they appear. Very simple stuff. Now, the bottom section, as they get smaller, gets closer and closer to this angle that reduces to nothing. You can't see anything. I've given this example a few times. If you're wearing a pair of shoes, your mate is wearing a pair of shoes. He takes off the shoes and you back away from those shoes. Eventually, those shoes will reach part of the angle where they are too small to see. Their angular size reduces to nothing. 
Now, if the guy walks across and puts those shoes on, because he has an increased angle to the top section of him, you will see him, but you won't see the shoes. The same applies to the turbines, as demonstrated on screen now. Well, I guess geometrically on a flat plane, we wouldn't expect to see these things, but I will give you that there are atmospheric conditions on a sphere Earth and a flat Earth, so there are going to be some atmospheric conditions and some kind of and mirages and crap like that. So, But this whole viewing angle, this angular resolution thing that you guys are doing, it doesn't make sense in any kind of it way make at all. Yeah, it does. It's demonstrable even on a small scale. So what I also have it on the bill. No, no, that's all right. What part of what I said didn't make sense? Um, just, just the very fact of me going to Salt Lake City and looking and 300, 200 feet of a building's being obstructed, 100 feet of... Yeah, so 200 feet of buildings being obstructed. That 200 feet is going to be in that reduced viewing angle. And as you demonstrated in your photography, Tim, when you raise up, you get it back. But that's because you've increased the angle. That's so... It, it's just not even... It's not even wrong because it's just so dumb. So what's I mean, your I, assertion? I'll just say, so okay. We, is cool. your assertion, hold on, is your assertion that we are raising up and seeing beyond the Earth curve that is assumed in the Earth curve calculator? Is that your assertion? No, actually we're seeing uh, so beyond what's the causing, horizon. So at, what's obstructing it? So what's obstructing what? it, Tim? What's causing the obstruction in your mind? Well, if I'm looking over water and all I see is water that's obstructing buildings that I know are there and they are not there, well, then I'm going to have to guess that it's the water that is obstructing it and that the underlying issue is, is that the Earth has curvature. And this, of course, is everything that I've been talking about, about the sun not changing in angular size. Well, that's a different subject. That doesn't so make let's sense stick to with the your subject. whole uh, let's stick to the subject. argument. Hold on. Let's stick to so the subject. The Hold, on. The Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hello. Middle of a conversation. So... Why would you assume that because of Earth curve, the water is obstructing the buildings? Because it's curving. What would lead you to that conclusion? Does it sound very logical geometry, to Geometry. Simple what, geometry and what like common geometry? sense. What geometry? Uh, geometry that would be uh, trying to test if maybe my hypothesis would be that the Earth was flat or that it was a square. Or that Where would we find this? Where would we find this geometry? Um, it's a kind of an aspect of math. It's called geometry. You yeah. Probably look where it would up we? And study yeah. Some. Where would we find the geometry that backs your assertion that the Earth has a curvature to the water? I don't see the logical connection, Tim. I don't know why you're bringing up geometry. In the you first brought place. it up, dickhead. Wait. Did I say the word geometry? Did the word geometry cross my lips before you said it? Yeah, no. like five times. So now actually. you're asking me why I want to know how your geometry proves there's a bloody curve blocking the view, and you don't seem to want to tell me and assert that I'm what bringing up geometry. It? I'm not bringing the up geometry. The Steno liner? <laughs> Rancy's so, photography? That you don't seem to be answering my question. You don't, I don't know. seem to be answering my question. Where do you take the logical step? All you've given us so far is a word, geometry. Yeah, geometry. Yeah, so how do we get from that to having a curve to water, which is observably flat? Because I know when I cross these buildings that they are there. But yeah. when I'm 26 miles away, only half of them are there. Yes, so I understand that. Geometry, yes, we get that. That's an assertion of your observation. Oh, and very we've good. seen it. Okay. We understand that. You do get now it. I'm asking, so you just interrupting me, just now, interrupting right? me, Tim. So obviously can't cope with this question. So what up, takes you, where's voice. your step in logic that takes <laughs> you from you seeing a building obscured to it being an earth that is curved that is causing it? Geometry doesn't give us a logical connection, Tim. It's just a word. How do you make that logical connection? Oh, is he gone? Oh, he's dropped. Oh, I was looking forward to the answer. Oh, that was so convenient that he got lost. Yeah, I'll give the answer. He gets it from a begging the question, proof of nothing, perspective hijacking, curve calculator, which will assume the Earth has a radius value. He just didn't want to say that. Hey, and if he, was gonna, 
He should have been talking about trigonometry in the first place, not geometry. <laughs> sure. Well, I, I wanted to know. Hey, Zinder, uh, you're real. Hey, Zinder. Hold on. Hold Hi. on. Hi, Zinder. Yeah. Hello. Good to How are you? you? Very well. Good to have you. Perfect. Just uh, listen to the last conversation five minutes ago. It was kind of interesting. Mm. Shout out to Tim Osman. Which one? The Tim Osman one? Uh, yeah, like the last three minutes or so. I Three okay. or four, five minutes, I think, you talked. Well, you do realize that in his footage, he actually shows a coyote on a, on a piece of land from an observational height that there should be around about, was it 45 foot or 50 foot hidden, Anthony, if you remember rightly? And he showed that he saw this coyote on the other side of the, uh, of the, the water that he was looking across at the buildings at. So he saw the dog or whatever it was, or coyote. Um, and he omits that. It doesn't, you know, oh, that doesn't matter. Forget that. Forget that we can see the dog, that there should be 50 foot curve. Um, and then he looks at the buildings. So that's why I was trying to nail him down onto, I wanted to know that that was the observation he was talking about. Oh, I, I haven't seen that picture, so I can't say anything about this. But okay. yeah, thank well, you for your illustration. Yeah. I'm the going to be back soon, like one minute. Excuse me. Yeah. Sorry. The, the, the bottom line is, though, he's talking about buildings being obscured. And the only way you can extrapolate out that an obstruction is actually the earth getting in the way is when you use the begging the question perspective omitting calculator that assumes a radius value. I think this is the perfect moment to shout out the Dodo and Aristarchus. Boom. Yeah, retracted. I can't believe nobody <laughs> Tim Osman one. No, kudos to Tim. He's hanging on to this um, begging the question fallacy with his fingernails. You know, I said to him in the chat that you were chatting to Nummy in. I was like, Tim, what are you going to do with all that equipment you've bought? What are you going to do with your drone now that you can't use it to prove Earth curve? Because we've highlighted the fact that the proof is based around a begging the question perspective hijacking proof of nothing earth curve calculator with a radius value already so in are you trust him literally you know ranty's sitting pretty he can take photos all day long and say look how flat the earth is whenever you come and present anything doesn't matter what you've got oh you've got an obstruction well what does that prove it's not a curve is it you're just saying the bottom of the buildings can't be seen well there's 101 explanations for that what's your explanation oh they really you assume a radius right and when you assume that radius with your begging the question perspective hijacking curve calculator, you say it's Earth that's in the way because your model tells you when hijacking perspective that it's Earth curve in the way. In R, you it's trust. A, it's not even an argument, Nathan. Oh, really? Like, so Nathan, what, what's yes, blocking? Really. So you think that He's it's not, Earth? It's not so what, the what, question. what do you think's blocking those buildings, P? Is it Earth curve, like Tim asserts? Yeah, but it's not begging the question. Uh, what, what would take you to that conclusion, P? Um, the pictures of the Earth from space. Sorry, we're talking about pictures of the Earth from the ground. Yeah. Yeah, so we're talking about pictures and buildings being obscured, and the fact that when you do that, you have to go to a begging the question perspective hijacking proof of nothing curve it's calculator not. that assumes a radius value in order to extract out that the obstruction caused by the viewing angle is actually earth curve. So when soundly shows a very low angle with an induced refraction effect, formerly known as actually a reduced viewing angle, where it looks like it's curved through a shitload of distortion, and then you raise up and get a higher angle, it looks flat as a pancake. And it's because that's an effect of the viewing angle. Sod all to do with curve of the earth unless you want to use a begging the question proof of nothing perspective hijacking curve calculator in r you trust uh, nath can i ask you something? <clears throat> i want to ask you to respond to what why, why would a viewing angle make the earth look curved okay let's bring up this video again Uh, Ranty, can I ask you something very short? Is he here? Yeah, sure. Um, so the the things that disappear bottom up when you zoom in, should they reappear? Due to perspective? Um, you mean if you're zooming in, will it? Yeah, you see further in. 
No, I've, ne I've never been a proponent of that belief that you can zoom in and bring something back from beyond the curve. I think if it's just hidden, it's hidden. Uh, the yeah, the, the camera helps. Yeah, the camera helps for you to get a nearer and see it clearer. But you know, if it's if it's in that very new, narrow viewing angle and it's completely gone, then no matter no matter amount of uh, <clears throat> camera lens or anything is going to bring it back. Okay, oh, P, hold on, hold on, oh, okay. Try, hold on. Yeah. I want to give P an answer. So, can you see the top left image on screen? If you click my icon, P. Come on, P, are you looking? Yes. Right, let's just rewind it. So, do you see this here? This curve that we appear to have on this flat straight bridge. Do you see this curve? He's got the camera on the yellow line. It's a very, very, very limited viewing angle. Now, that same... Hold on, P, I haven't finished. That same exact effect that looks like it's curving because of a reduced viewing angle is the same effect that we have here. Pause it. Aren't you, aren't Hold you on, P, the I'm nearly now? there. See this effect You're here? The question it's the now. same effect. It's the same exact effect, P. Uh, I don't think that's evidence that a viewing angle makes something that's flat curve. That's insane. Well, I'd agree with you, other than when we showed you over and over again a elevation of the same bridge and it looking flat as a pancake. Because guess what? This view down here with this roller coaster, that's nonsense, P. That's caused by a viewing angle, a reduction in a viewing angle and an extreme zoom. That's what's causing that. Because when you, let's just do it. So we can compare and contrast. The, cur the curve is either there or it isn't there. Oh, well, uh, let's just show you this next video then, P. No make, problem. An angle, a viewing angle, isn't going to make something that is flat curve. Really? Well, why yes, does this... Really. Well, okay. Well, why does this look... Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> why does this not look like the pictures we just had on screen? It's a completely different picture. A completely different viewing angle, P. Right, but so the viewing if angle it's curved, P. Flat P. Curved. If the Earth is curved, it's just curved. So it doesn't matter what sodding angle you look at; it's just curved. Right. Like it's curved. soundly it's curved asserts, it shouldn't not curve at altitude if it's just curving around the Earth. It should just be curved. But what do you know? You get high and like with Phuket words bridge at a very short distance. When you get low, you can reduce the viewing angle and cause things to look curved. Uh, I don't think so. Well, why is that this not like curved? You're then? The, you're, why you're is this the not? Why is this fallacy. not curved then, P? Why isn't this curved? Because it looks curved when you've got a reduced viewing angle. That looks curved to me. That's curved. Oh, right. Well, you're any showing second... me a picture of the curve and then no just problem. telling me it's not curved. It's all right, it's it's all right P. Don't get so triggered. We can show triggered. it you 15 times with him drawing a very it's straight showing... line yeah. on what you think looks curved. This is curved. I see okay. curve. Okay. If you say so. Let's just pause it there. Uh... So, there you go, P. I don't see a curve. What I see is a very straight line. Would, do you want us to zoom in on it? That happens in this video too. We've shown it you three times. Want to see? <gasps> no curve, P. Increase in viewing angle, P. Trick of the eye, P. Soundly's a fraud, P. You've just been taken in by a fraud, a charlatan, someone who's tricked you. Doesn't tell you what's really happening. He understands soundly and he exploits it. So he can take advantage of dicks like you who believe him. Despite the fact that we can show you endless examples of reducing the viewing angle and it causing an apparent curve. It's me. Uh, Any Rantu. Anything, P? Anything at all? So you don't understand how viewing angle can cause things to look curved, and I've just shown you. I don't, I don't, I don't like your begging the question, illogical fallacy. I'm not begging the question. I haven't 
made to, I'm showing you stuff. This isn't begging the question. What are you talking about? There's no logical fallacy here. This is just a video of a very straight bridge with a line drawn on it showing how flat it is. There you go. There's another one. Let's pause it again. So, where's the curve, P? Where's that soundly curve that he shows us on his low angle videos? Did you accept these images are, are straight lines, Pete? You gonna tell me I'm begging the question again? Yeah, you are. What, 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 by showing a picture of a very straight line on a very straight bridge that's apparently curved according to low angle shots taken by a guy called Soundly, who we assert is just a fraud, tricking idiots. Anything at all? Just gonna say you don't like this, or that it's a begging the question. What, what what have you got, P? What you're showing me a picture of the curve. What? There's no curve there, P. I, I mean, there is curve. you're just asserting. So you're literally just gonna deny what your eyes see and assert your religious belief. Yeah, he's a denier. It's a denier. Pathetic. Uh, Rantu. Hang May on, I ask you something? Since you on, are that, on, that yeah. silence was golden then. Yeah, come on, dude. It's... Come on, we were enjoying that silence while Pete was on the rocks. Nah. Well, it's, it's I, don't, I don't enjoy the, him being silent. Depends uh, on whether you're winning or losing, though, right? Uh, yeah, you know, um, <laughs> Renty, uh, <laughs> so we, we can agree that uh, you have a um, you, you have less of, an, an, uh, of a viewing angle if you close one eye, right? No, because you, in, you you increase your viewing angle by putting the second eye in your head, for example. No, no, viewing angle, or is it? Oh, didn't I get the word in uh, German? Because angle for me means winkel, which means like sixty degree angle. Try an angle of sixty like... degree or an angle of one hundred eighty degree. Well, if try try no point five of a degree. That's the angle we're sort of talking around in that area. Half so, a degree. Yeah, but you, you can increase the viewing angle by putting a second eye in your head. I mean, if you close one eye, you, you can agree that you decrease your viewing angle. Yeah, then, your no. horizontal no. viewing angle. We're talking about the vertical viewing angle, which would be increased by raising in altitude. All right. So we're talking about viewing range. You're no, no, talking, no we're angle. not talking about viewing range. We're talking about viewing angle. Uh, can I show you what comes up when I just type in viewing angle? Okay. Vertical right. viewing angle, if you want us to be more specific. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. Uh, all right, this, this shows the horizontal, but this show also comes up when I type in viewing angle. It is vertical. I know when you add the second eye, you aren't going to increase your vertical viewing angle. That's uh, I, I know that. So... But you are going to increase one viewing angle, minimum. Right. Opening a second one. eye won't okay. change the angle that you view a ship in the distance. It won't change that angle. The horizontal one. Let's say again. The horizontal one. I mean, you you are going to change a viewing angle. So what? what, what, I, so, what sorry. What, why what, do you keep saying the horizontal one when I've now said it twice? You're going to start pissing me you, off. The vertical. You do the same the, with, why are you talking over me? You've ignored me twice. Not the horizontal angle. Yeah, I understand that. But Excellent. we can agree that you increase the viewing angle. No. Are you talking about width? No. We're talking Which, about hold on, Ranty. Yeah. You are going to piss me off. So we're going to agree we increase the viewing angle. Which viewing angle? The horizontal one we've said we're not talking about three times? Is that the viewing angle we are increasing by opening a second eye? So the next thing is you can. You're not answering me. Earth, right? Is you... that the angle that you're talking about when you just confirm we do increase the angle, completely contrary to what I've said? Is it the horizontal angle, the one we're not talking about? No, I was talking about the vertical. That's the point I was going to make was about the vertical viewing angle. Well, so you... do we? Let's can, just no, no, no. Let's peg this down. No, 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 no. Let's just peg this down. Are you suggesting that by opening a second eye? we will increase our viewing angle to a ship on the horizon. No, I'm not. Right, so what's your point? 
if you add a camera, if you connect two cameras, you can increase the viewing angle. Of no, the you can't view. unless if you, you can raise one above the other. You keep talking about horizontal viewing angle, even though this is now the fourth time I've said that's not what we're talking about. So why are you saying that if you add a second camera, is the second camera on top of the first? Because then you get an infinitesimally small increase in angle, if that's what you're suggesting. Are you suggesting they go on top of each other or side by side, like the eye example you're trying to use? No, I'm going to uh, suggest they are uh, going on top of each other, buying, so you can increase the viewing angle of the vertical line. Right, so as asserted, you will increase your angle of attack by raising in altitude, precisely as asserted. Nothing yeah. to do with one eye or two eyes. No, I I just mentioned to one or two eyes to verify if you increase your viewing angle by your definition. No, you don't. So horizontal lines don't matter. Uh, sorry, is this going to be the fifth time you are going to piss me off? Do it again. I'll just kick you out. You disingenuous little twat. How many times do I have to say no? We're not talking about the horizontal angle. Repeat after me. We are not talking about horizontal angle. The only way to increase the vertical angle would be to raise up in altitude. Yeah, then say vertical angle since the beginning. Yes. I just So why are you using it. this red herring with the horizontal? So I just wanted to ask, by increasing your viewing angle, the ship should come back behind the horizon, right? What do you mean it's behind the horizon? Just because of the viewing angle. Behind the horizon, the horizon is an apparent position where the sky meets the ground. Why would something appear or disappear behind an apparent position that will change also when you raise an altitude? Well, I just was going to. Things don't disappear behind apparent positions. Okay, Zinder? That's nonsense. You, you are just assuming I'm making some claims you don't need. You just said that something will reappear from behind the horizon. And I am stating the horizon is an apparent position where the sky and ground meet. Nothing is going to disappear behind an apparent anything. So, by, as, you, as your theory says, by decreasing the viewing angle, it's going to disappear there. Yeah, you have a limitation yeah. of angular size. This will get worse as you get further away from things. If something yeah. like a pair of shoes is taken off and backed away from, eventually those shoes will reach an angular size that is too small to see. That does not change the fact that if you were to put those shoes on and then take the same picture, you would still have the same reduced viewing angle to the shoes but not to the person wearing the shoes. So you could see their ankles and their knees and their groin and their shoulders and their head, but not their shoes, unless you rose up in elevation, increasing your viewing angle, therefore bringing the thing that had disappeared from bottom up back into view. The reason things disappear from bottom up at distance is because of a reduction in viewing angle absolutely sod all to do with a begging the question fallacy that assumes earth as a radius and simultaneously ignores all aspects of perspective and with that i'm going to say first and foremost a huge massive enormous thank you to all of the debating panel despite the fact that i actually got the last word here and of course a massive thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this debate if you hated the show, you know exactly what to do. Probably done it already. But if you like the show, maybe consider sharing it with a friend or subscribing if you've not done so already. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!